All righty, Ethan, Julia, thank you again for taking some time to chat with me about the revival of Baby. Woo! Thank <laughs> you for having us. So, Ethan, let me start with you. How was it to collaborate with some of the production's original creative team and update the show to reflect more modern sensibilities? Uh, it was a dream come true, honestly. Um, you know, growing up, Baby was one of those scores that as a little musical theater nerd in my bedroom, I learned every word, every note. Um, and, uh, you know, when Liz approached me about directing it, I kind of was like, how do I find my way into this story? Because this is not my experience at all. And so, um, you know, make deciding to try to make some of those changes uh, was really exciting, but then to have sort of the blessing as well as the collaboration with uh, the blessing from Sybil and David and the real collaboration with Richard was uh, not something that I expected and um, something I am really grateful for, so. Okay. Good, yeah. good. And the revival had a short run in late 2021. Is that correct? Yeah, we we had a, an initial sort of like proof of concept, we kind of call it in 2019. Right. And then we were slated to come back in March of 2020. Uh, <laughs> you know what happened there? And, and that was a blessing in disguise because it really gave Richard and I a chance to kind of like spend some real time digging in. Not that we spent the whole year and a half sort of working on it, but we were able to uh, sort of wrap our heads around the way we wanted to tell the story and like do our own research and then kind of come together and also put our incredibly like brilliant cast together to be able to interpret some of those changes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, and then we came back in October of, of 2021 and, and, um, and ran through just before Christmas. Okay. Cool. And, and, you know, and then, and then as soon as we started saying, oh, yeah, let's explore next steps, uh, Omicron hit. So, you know, those dirty words that come with, yep. the, with a two and a half year pandemic. Mm -hmm, for uh, sure. Well, then, how was the revival received by audiences? Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, we were, um, uh, once the word was out, we were sold out. Um, uh, you know, it, it achieved exactly what I hoped to achieve, which is, you know, that more people saw themselves in these characters. And, you know, obviously the the sort of big shift in uh, the stories were, was that middle couple being a same sex couple. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but through Richard's willingness, and then again, the sort of brilliance of who our cast was, we were able to shift you know the entire world yeah. um and so i do think that like what you, you know richard talks all the time about how when it first came out there were a lot of people who just were not interested because it was like you know all his gay friends were like i'm not yeah. interested in a story about a straight couple trying to have babies and now there was like you know something that touched upon lots of different experiences mm -hmm. which is both what ootb tries to do and then also what i try and do as a director so mm -hmm. Perfect. And Julia, you were in the you oh, yeah, words. You were in the revival playing Arlene. Is that correct? That is true. So, can you tell us more about your character? Um, my character was uh, as originally written in 1980. What year was it, Ethan? 83. 83. That's what I thought, and I thought maybe I was wrong. <laughs> um, and I saw that original production because I grew up in New York City, and my mom and I would go to TKTS and be like, "What's that?" <laughs> we we saw baby that way we saw sunday in the park with george that way we didn't know like we weren't like yes yes discerning theater yeah. we were just whatever but um uh arlene and alan who are the older of these three couples and for anyone who happens to be watching this who doesn't know baby mm -hmm. the very very basic version is it's three couples who are either trying to or find themselves pregnant at different stages of life how do they deal with it mm -hmm. that's kind of a very, very reductive <laughs> version. And Arlene and Alan are the oldest of the three couples. Um, and as they were originally written, they uh, were like basically professors at this university. It all takes place on a campus and uh, they have grown kids and she finds herself pregnant at the ripe old age of 40 mm. in 1983. Okay. And that was um, that was definitely a thing in 1983 to put your your chin on your hand about because like it was what it, it's so fascinating. What is so 
absolutely commonplace today simply was not mm-hmm. then. And I know that for sure, because my mom actually, my brother was born in 1986 and my mom was 40. Okay. And everyone's head exploded at first. They were like, what's going to happen? You know, it was like some <laughs> madness. And um, so uh, I, I knew Richard, I'd already worked with Richard and David both, but uh, doing um, Closer Than Ever. Okay. And Richard had directed it. And so like we had a relationship already and he was incredibly open to me and my very big mouth. And um, I have, <laughs> you can just ask Ethan, I have lots of opinions and <laughs> I will share them if you would like. And sometimes if you would not, uh, but, uh, but in the end, you know, you're the boss, you get to win, but I, I like being heard, I guess. So we'll put that, but, um, but I had a really serious talk with, uh, with Richard and I just said, you, you have to change their ages for several reasons. First of all, I'm not 40. Mm-hmm. I, I, and so I feel silly trying to be 40, whatever that means. I mean, it, it means nothing, but it does mean something. And, um, and also because now a 40 year old woman finding herself pregnant is just like, a, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, a, now. but a 50 year old woman finding herself pregnant is a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. And um, so along with Robert, who played my husband, uh, we got to really explore that part of it. Okay. It was very, the show is, is odd in that the more, more rather than less, the couples are separate. They're in their own sort of separate trajectories. They don't have a lot. There's a few crisscross, very memorable crisscrosses, but not really. So like we each got to work on our own uh, lane in our lane kind of. And I, I wasn't even entirely aware of the changes that were happening. Mm-hmm. with the other couples because we were so focused on yours and almost because we don't crisscross it it almost would have been um in a weird way i don't think distracting's quite the right word but like i can't pay uh, that's for them that's for them to figure out uh, we'll just be over here figuring out what the old people do mm-hmm. uh, but yeah so she finds herself pregnant and they have to figure out what to do about that Okay, perfect. Well, why a really long answer? Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Well, why did you want to be involved with this project initially? Me? Yeah. Because it's baby. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in 1983. Okay. And um, and because I've been lucky enough to subsequently, I mean, first of all, I loved that. Wait for it, cassette tape. Um, <laughs> oh, I I played that thing out, and um, I loved the show. In the many years that have passed since then, I, Liz Calloway, who is in the original cast, is a friend of mine, and I've done concerts with. I've worked with Catherine Cox, who was the original Pam in the the in the middle couple. Um, I know Todd Graff, who played the original Danny in the young couple. We went to the same summer camp together, like, and then I got to work with Richard Malpe. So just sort of those feelings of like, oh my gosh! I, <laughs> and when I was in college. I don't remember which summer it was. I was offered, I auditioned for, and I was offered a summer stock summer Mm -hmm. that included playing Lizzie in Baby. And I didn't do it because I decided that I wanted to, I'm from New York City and I wanted to go home for the summer and I wanted to take an acting class. Mm, Okay. Non-singing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, little little did did I realize, like that was the one chance I was going to get to play Lizzie. It never came my way again. And then as time went by, there could have been a possibility of me playing Pam. That never uh, materialized. And so I was sort of like, I guess I'm never going to get to do baby. <laughs> oh, well. No way. And, <clears throat> and then I did. I mean, it was like a crazy surprise gift to have that come out of the blue like that. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, we're kind of in this era now where where we are seeing more shows like that were like played in the seventies and eighties being revitalized into a more modern uh, for more modern audiences today. Do you believe that this uh, trend will continue? It is for either both of you. I mean, I think they. I think some shows don't lend themselves to that. Mm-hmm. It just sort of are what they are. And you need to leave them be. 
um, like the show, The Rink, for example. I don't know why I just thought of The Rink, <laughs> but it's by Candor and Ebb. It originally starred Cheetah Rivera and Les Minnelli. It's very specifically set in its time when it was written mm -hmm. because the Vietnam War is part of it. Mm -hmm. And like there, there are things in history that are touched upon that you have to set it in this time or otherwise the ages of the characters won't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Baby was is pretty malleable because mm -hmm. they don't, with the ex like in the song I Want It All, Richard just changed up some lyrics to make the, the name references more current yeah. but in general the show kind of can float wherever it wants mm -hmm. to float mm -hmm. and something like the rink you have to set in uh, i don't know the early 80s mm -hmm. which means i mean you know when you go to see a show and it takes place in the 80s and you're like good god those wigs yeah like, <laughs> and, and those wigs are probably correct there was a pro what the, the 80s are like a tricky era mm -hmm. i maybe a decade from now they will be less tricky i feel like they're almost too close <laughs> so I feel like sometimes there's a difference between a revisal and then taking a show exactly as it exists, like what they did with Oklahoma Yeah. Mm -hmm. recently was that I have no notion of years because of the pandemic, but whenever that <laughs> lovely thing happened, <laughs> you know, they, I think, I think I'm right in this. I don't think they changed a word. Okay. No, they didn't Is that change. right? Okay. Yeah. And yet. They gave you a completely different Oklahoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I knew some people who hold Oklahoma very close to their hearts, like mm -hmm. either they've done it or whatever, and uh, who did not respond well to mm -hmm. it. And I knew other people who were like, that was everything to me. And to me, I feel like that's awesome because that's what makes a show fascinating and like a great horse race. And I don't, they're doing a guys and dolls right now in London. It just started previews that a friend of mine is, is playing Miss Adelaide in, and it's like super immersed, like a whole portion of the audience moves around the, 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 the mm -hmm. floor and then they're seating up above. It looks so cool. And a friend of mine who is very holds guys and dolls in their heart. I was kind of explaining what my friend who had explained to me about it. And they were saying, well, they're like, I don't want to see that guys and dolls. I don't want to see that. Mm. I went, well, honestly, I don't need to see guys and dolls again. Like I've right. seen the most perfect one. It was with Faith Prince and Nathan Lane. <laughs> I saw it. So at this point, go ahead, do what yeah. you did to Oklahoma, do something. <laughs> so there's that way. And then there's a re revisal way. And then there's, sometimes there's just Sunday in the park with George is Sunday in the park with George. Mm -hmm. You can do little things, mm -hmm. but that there are elements of that show that just are built in. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely. Well, last month, a Yellow Sound label released a new off-Broadway cast recording, which also celebrates the original production's 40th anniversary. How much fun was it putting this project together? It was, uh, it was a lot of hard work, um, <laughs> but it was totally worth it. I think that that's... Uh, you know, Richard would would say it was we were doing a, uh, a brand new musical with a 38 year old score. And I think like Julia was saying, like there are certain sounds and energies of the original recording that very much live in the 80s. And mm -hmm. we really worked hard to bring the experiences and the stories and the characters into the 21st century. But so, too, was sort of the sound of it. So, um, you know, I think uh working continue continuing to collaborate with our music director jeffrey and and uh richard and um and michael Kreuter, our executive producer at yellow sound label on like making sure we sort of successfully towed that line of like paying homage to the original and making like you know all those folks who wore out their cassette tape or learned every word and every every lyric and and note um you know, we still wanted them to feel that reverence and why they loved it in the first place, but we also wanted it to sound like it was now, like the yeah. story, the, the same way the story reflects the now, you know, um, Richard also would often reference that like, you know, uh, the whole world has changed since 1983. Mm -hmm. And so you, the world that was created back then to tell this story is not the world we're living in now. And like, 
you know, I was two in 1983. So I didn't want, I didn't How also want to, I know, sorry. But it's okay. <laughs> I didn't want, you know, I don't, I don't know that world. So it would be inauthentic for me to try and like, um, create that sound, create these characters in that world. And I think uh, in that time period. And so I think that, you know, to be able to preserve it and and present it to a whole new generation is really exciting. Um, and it was fun, you know? I mean, it was like a day we had closed in December. We got together in, in the end of April to rehearse it. We got together to record it in May. And then six months went by and everyone went on to other projects and worked on other things. And then we got to come together for a little cast cast release, uh, album release party. And so it was like these nice little, like mini reunions along the way um, awesome. that just sort of kept us all tethered together. So yeah, and now it's like such a gift to have it, you know, something to just sort of pop in my, pop my little AirPods in and turn on my favorite song and just remember that the, moment. <laughs> it's interesting when you talk about that, like the, cause I was thinking of the cassette tape. Like you, we used to listen to music very differently. Yeah. You a you had to buy the whole album. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing, and with any kind of music, theater music, pop music, whatever. And I I feel like in recent times the Beyonce Renaissance album, if either of you, any of you know it, like that is made to be that is an album to be listened to in order. Yeah. Don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. There are singles, but it's meant to be experienced. And I just love everything about her. But I also love that she did that. And um, and I learned. I learned this show straight through mm -hmm. as, as a, as a whole album yeah. and on cassettes, while you could fast forward because CDs were the next thing, the next like whatever stage of music listening was you could just punch that button and pop to the next. So there were always the skippable tracks that oh, yeah. each mm -hmm. person had this tracks that they just skipped. Uh, but on a cassette, you would kind of let it go or you would, push fast forward really quickly, but it wasn't as simple. So you kind of just let the whole album. And now I, I mean, I I hope people listen to the whole album because I do think the story of it and the way it's captured is such a lovely uh, thing that's not to be dismissed. Okay. But I also know that it, for anyone they're good at, you can just now like be like i want to listen to this and this yeah and, this. and, it's, and it's on a um what do you call it like a, like a playlist playlist yeah mm -hmm. and, and that's it yeah but um i do hope that people listen to the whole thing at least once through yeah at least once yeah definitely yeah, and you can choose you choose your <laughs> favorites <laughs> yeah and a special concert of this album uh took place on february 13th at the green room 42 how did that go fabulous it was great. It was, a, it was a blast. Like I said, it was one of those, we all got to get together again, celebrate yeah. something, share oh, yeah. it with people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it was really fun. Richard was there, which is, you know, all, people always love seeing him and hearing some of the anecdotes. And um, yeah, it was, it was a part, I mean, it was like a performance, but it was also part celebration. It was part party. I mean, it was really Everything. It was a great night. Awesome. Yeah. Well, what do you ultimately hope audiences take away from this new production of Baby? I hope they Maybe. see themselves in it. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you go. No, I was just, I was going to say, go ahead, Ethan, dude, take it. Yeah, I hope they see, I hope they see some part of their own story in it. Mm -hmm. I hope they see some way to relate to it. Um, it, uh, uh, it's a, having a baby is something people do all the time. And um, now the possibility of who has babies and what families look like has changed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great thing. And so, um, uh, you know, whatever, whatever um, triumphs and whatever challenges come with sort of an individual or a couple's journey to, to parenthood. Um, I hope that there's like some part of that that's reflected in this piece uh, that does what theater does best, which is just, you know, sort of make you feel seen and heard and, yeah. and, and uh, represent it. So yeah. definitely. Julia would like to add to that. I was just gonna say, it's definitely one of those. Sh I mean, there are some shows that are about events or characters that are fantastical in some manner, you know, whether they're, I don't know, 
animals <laughs> or or royalty or or barbers who eat, put people in meat pies like whatever it is like things that aren't real life so to speak and then the ones that exist on the plane that we all exist on uh, are just so moving to me because to to know that that someone it's always really satisfying to do a show where people say to you afterwards that's that's me yeah mm -hmm. that's even if that person who is actually speaking to you has very little in common with you as like but the the experiences are universal it was like ethan just said not everybody has a baby but a whole lot of people do yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. or conversely don't mm -hmm. you know like and it, it's it, it's such a, a a remarkable thing to me sometimes if i think about it that that david and richard wrote this score and really tapped into a lot of how women feel about the process mm -hmm. as well as not, it's not just a male heavy, what the men go through yeah. mm -hmm. kind of a score. It's really kind of remarkable to me that they, that they tapped so beautifully into that. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that there's a, yet another version for people hopefully to enjoy yeah. mm -hmm. to, to get to relate to. And I hope, all the young people start singing the songs. In <laughs> yes. Well, any word on audition classes. <laughs> well, any word on what's next for baby? No, no word. No, nothing. No, no official word. There's always little rumblings. You know, um, out of the box, we pr we produce a whole season of of projects. So um, every time something happens, like. You know, we closed and there was what's going to happen. And we had all this, these little meetings and little conversations. And then uh, uh, we were nominated for the Drama Desk in May uh, mm -hmm. for Outstanding Revival. And then there were little meetings and little chats. And then the cast album came out just three and a half weeks ago. And there's been little meetings and little chats. So, uh, you know, um, I definitely hope that at the very least, I know Richard and I have talked about taking it to a couple of other out of town theaters to continue to develop sort of the new um the new storyline there's been discussions about uh offering this version to be available for licensing and then of course um there's always the folks in new york who have ideas and plans and thoughts and wishes and desires so we'll see if any of those come to fruition okay perfect well ethan how can one stay up to date with you uh ethanpaulini.com emp413 on all the socials um yeah that's the best way okay and julia uh i'm uh peppa mama p-e-p-a-m-a-m-a -A -M -A on instagram okay i'm my name on twitter but i don't really traffic up in there anymore <laughs> <laughs> don't blame you all right perfect <laughs> well then before we wrap up are there any other upcoming projects or anything else either one of you would like to mention or plug at this time uh a, a bunch of different check out ootbtheatrics.com mm. um i'm also the producing artistic director of the weather Vane theater in whitefield new hampshire a great uh equity alternating repertory company 58 seasons weathervanenh.org we open up in june so lots going on perfect julia and i would just say that baby album just came out and uh, a show that i did last summer also had a cast album just come out came out called um between the lines mm -hmm. which is talk about filled with a lot of bops that the young people are going to be singing <laughs> yeah that's a it's a great show i would very much recommend that cast album and i don't know in the immediate in new york i'm singing in an evening of judy garland music okay uh for the abingdon theater company nice. march something or other <laughs> you'd have to look it up i'm not <laughs> even sure what it is so that's professional of me <laughs> but it's got an amazing ama an awesome lineup of of singers so okay perfect fantastic